Hi everybody, I'm David Kennedy and in this video I'm going to give you an introduction to triad pairs on guitar. While I'll be playing guitar throughout, the theory behind triad pairs applies to any instrument that can play chords. So if you play keyboard or any other chordal instrument you can easily follow along. All of the tabs and audio files can be found at the Patreon link below. As the thumbnail suggests, this video is specifically about triad pairs that happen outside of the jazz idiom. Triad pairs in jazz can be used to create very complex and exotic sounding harmonic progressions but for today's video I'm looking at triad pairs and how they can apply universally in any genre of music. I hope that this video will help you expand your lead playing and a more practical approach to learning the caged system. Without further delay let's get into it with the first exercise. In exercise one, we're in the key of C major. And I'm gonna use this exercise to explain what triad pairs actually are. The concept of triad pairs is very simple and straightforward. We take each of the chords from the scale that we're in, in this case, C major. Chord one is C, two is D minor, three is E minor, 4 is F major, 5 is G major, 6 is A minor, and 7 is B half diminished. And then we go back to 1. And triad pairs simply states that we're going to switch between chords that happen to be beside each other in that key. So taking the progression in exercise 1, we have C major going to A minor, going to G major, going to F and then back to one or C major. So on the C major chord, I'm switching between C major and D minor. So we have D minor in the A minor shape, C major in the A shape, D minor in the D shape, C major in the D shape and D minor in the C shape and C in the C shape. On the A minor chord we're switching between A minor and G. It doesn't really matter whether you go for the chord that is above or below. It's really a matter of taste and experimentation. So I also want this video to be an invitation for you just to try out what works best on your ear. The experimentation side of things will really help you understand the fretboard and these chords and the sounds of each of the chords as you go. So on the A minor chord, we're switching between A minor and G. So I've got A minor in the A minor shape, the traditional A minor shape. G in the E shape. A minor in the E shape, G major in what would be the C shape of the caged system, A minor in what would be the D shape of the A minor chord, and then I switch up to the A minor up on the an octave, in the A minor shape but up an octave, and land back on the G chord for the next chord. So quickly the theory behind what's happening here, if I play an A minor chord and have against that a G triad sounding, what you actually create is an A minor 9 with the B that happens in the G chord and also an A minor 11 at the same time. So it actually can create very colourful chord sounds. The same is true of all of these triad pairs that I'm doing in this exercise. Next up is the G chord. And on the G chord, I'm switching between chord four and five, or F and G major in the context of C. Again, just quickly on the fretboard, we have the E shape of both F and G, and then we have the D shape of F on the fifth fret and G on the seventh. Then we have the A shape 
but play it sounds an F chord and then sounds a G chord. And then lastly, on the F shape, I'm taking E minor. And it really pays to be able to see these chord shapes at any particular moment on the guitar so that you can be a bit more free with it. And this is where the practice comes in. So I know over this chord, I want to alternate between the triads E minor and F and being able to pick at random is very helpful for any musician to do freely. And we finish out the phrase just on C major. Let's now have a look at the second exercise. So this exercise definitely steps up a gear and is a little bit more advanced than the last one. But the principles of triad pairs that we discussed in the last exercise still apply. We're in A major now, which has the chords A, B minor, C sharp minor, D, E, F sharp minor, G sharp half diminished, and back to A major. So we start this exercise with a very regular triad pair between chords one and two of A major, which is A and B minor. So I have the A shape of A, the B minor shape, the E shape of A, the E shape of B minor, the D shape of A, the D shape of B minor, the back up an octave with the A shape, and then what we do is we switch to the A natural minor scale. So what's happening here is a thing called modal interchange in music. Modal interchange is when you change the tonality of a section of a piece of music. In this case, what we're doing is we're keeping the tonic of A, but instead of having a major sound in the latter half of this exercise, we switch to A natural minor. It's called modal interchange because it changes from the mode of the Ionian mode, which is A major, to the A Aeolian mode, or the sixth mode of C major. You may think that A major with three sharps in its key signature and C major with no sharps or flats in its key signature are unrelated. However, they're related and bound by the tonic note A. And one of the most common devices used by composers, songwriters, and arrangers in music is to switch between the major tonality of a key, in this case A major, and its tonic minor, or the minor beginning from A. This gives us the really widely used minor plagal cadence, which is when you have A major, but you go to D minor instead of D major, We borrow a chord belonging to the natural minor scale instead of the major scale. So back to the exercise. In the latter half of the exercise, I'm still doing triad pairs, but what I'm switching between are two triads that happen to be in the natural minor scale. So I choose D minor and E minor and bring it all the way down the fretboard. giving us that minor plagal cadence at the very end. The last few parts of the exercise is simply an arpeggio and scale exercise to really just practice getting quicker at those. So I have a major arpeggio. And then I switch to the natural minor scale descending. Let's move now to the third and final exercise. So this 
this final exercise is slightly more advanced because the major key is not our starting point. The exercise here is derived from the fifth mode of the A melodic minor scale. So A melodic minor sounds and looks like this on guitar. And its fifth mode begins on E. If you play all of the notes of the A melodic minor scale but start from E, what you get is the mode Mixolydian flat six. It has all the notes of an, an E Mixolydian that you may be familiar with, except the sixth note in that is flattened. So we have a C natural in place of a C sharp. The beauty of this mode is the interplay between the bright sounding major and dark sounding ladder half. which is actually central to the melodic minor sound. We start minor and we end bright and major. In E Mixolydian flat six, we have the opposite approach. We start major and finish minor. So in figuring out the triads that correspond to each degree of the mode, we do the exact same thing we do in a major key. Chord one is E7. Chord two is F sharp half diminished. Chord three is G sharp half diminished. Chord four is A minor major seven. Chord five is B minor seven. Chord six is C major seven sharp five and chord seven is D7. And in the exercise, all I do is switch between the first chord of the E mixolydian flat six and the second chord of that same mode. So up the fretboard, we have For the guitarists, it's going to look as though we're switching between E major and a D7 shape the whole way up the fretboard because inherent in the F sharp diminished chord is the D7 chord. And I think this is the easiest way of thinking about it as you play it. So we're looking for everywhere, every instance of E and D7. At the end of the exercise, I simply play the E Mixolydian flat six mode descending on the guitar. So just a reminder that the audio files and the tabs can be accessed via the Patreon link below if you'd like to practice at slower tempos with them. So that's it for today's video. I hope it proved useful and that it inspires you to go practice and try out triad pairs in the future. Thanks as always for watching and please consider hitting subscribe if you've gained something useful here. This has been David Kennedy and I'll see you in the next one.